Hi, I'm Brian Lasseur, president of Xenix Software, where we reduce the cost of software testing by making testers more productive. I'd like to share with you a technique for writing functional test plans that will improve your testing coverage. This approach will not only help you organize your thoughts about test requirements, but it will also make it easier to communicate your plan coverage to other members of your team. In this presentation, I'll talk briefly about the purpose of the functional test plan and the inputs to the test planning process. I'll spend most of our time together explaining the test plan format and the approach that I use to organize test requirements. Finally, I'll take you through an example as I create a test plan for a simple query builder. Let's get started. I think it helps to start out by considering why we write functional test plans. By its very nature, software is difficult to test. You can't hold it in your hand and examine it for defective parts. You can't plug it in and look for smoke. You can't smell it or taste it. So a lot of our senses are not very helpful. But we can make definite statements about how a piece of software is supposed to behave, what it's supposed to do and not do. Creating a test plan is an exercise in defining what it means to test the target software application, and it helps us to organize our thoughts. Unless you're testing something very simple, it helps to write it down. The test plan becomes a document that describes the features of the application that will be tested, that can be shared with other members of the team so that they can help determine whether the test plan is comprehensive. Does it cover all the aspects of the software that need to be tested? The functional test plan serves other purposes. Because it provides a very detailed accounting of each test that will be executed, it can be used to determine how many testers will be needed to complete a test cycle within the project's target dates. It can also be used as a definition of acceptance criteria, spelling out exactly that in order for the software to pass, it must successfully perform the specific set of tests. The functional test plan does not specify how the test will be executed, but it does provide a work order for the development of manual and automated tests that will provide that level of detail. Finally, the test plan serves as a management tool throughout the testing phase of the project. Managers can use the test plan to measure manual and automated test development progress and test execution progress, since the test plan defines the test cycle. There are several documents that are helpful when writing a functional test plan, including requirements, functional specifications, design specifications, and models, if they exist. In some organizations, these documents are not available, and the tester has only the software application itself. Regardless of the amount of documentation that's available, it's important to develop an understanding of how the end user will actually use the application. This knowledge is often referred to as domain expertise. Let's focus now on the format of the test plan. An outline is a graphic organizer. It begins with the main ideas documented on the left margin. Successively finer levels of detail are indented to the right. It helps to guide our thinking from the general to the specific. The structure itself is sometimes referred to as a tree, and the terminal nodes, those with no children, are called leafs. When outline format is applied to functional test plans, the test requirements are presented in a view that is well organized and logical moving from the general to the specific. When I first started writing outline-based test plans, I noticed something interesting happen. 
I may have started out thinking I had a good idea of what needed to be tested, but as I begin to add more and more detail to my outline, I would discover a lot of other test requirements that I might have missed if I had not laid them out graphically in a way that I could easily evaluate what I had not covered. Likewise, when a reviewer reads an outline-based test plan, it's easy to understand the author's thought process because it's possible to read the plan at any level. For example, some reviewers might only be interested in making sure that all the top-level ideas are covered, whereas others may want to ensure the coverage of a particular feature is comprehensive. It's good practice to include both positive and negative requirements in the test plan. The positive tests verify that the target application does what it's designed to do. The negative tests ensure that the application responds in an acceptable manner when the user uses the application in ways that it was not designed, like providing incomplete or invalid data. Positive tests should always include boundary conditions like minimum and maximum values, along with those that are right in what I call the happy path. Submitting a form with missing required fields is an example of a negative test. Other examples include inputting invalid data types or out-of-bound values. I'm going to explain the approach in a few steps and then I'll demonstrate live so that you can see how I go about it. First, I list all the features that I plan to test. For each one of those features, I break it apart again and again until further subdivision doesn't make any sense. Let's look at a very simple example. If I was tasked with writing a test plan for the find feature of a text editor, one of the first things that I would note is that the feature allows the user to decide whether to match case, search for whole or partial matches, and move in the up and down direction. These are examples of sub-features. Next, I would begin to think about other conditions that the find feature should support. For example, I would consider the type of string to find. I want to make sure that the find feature could locate single characters, strings that include spaces, mixed case strings, special characters, spaces, very long strings, and strings that span multiple lines. I'd also be interested in the location of the string in the document. You can see how once you start to make lists like the one I've been making, the exercise itself helps you think of new conditions. Once you have a list of sub-features and conditions that you want to test, think about how they should be combined to form unique tests. For example, in the case of our find feature, you might decide that it's important to test for both full and partial matches in both the up and down directions, but perhaps other conditions will be covered in only one direction. Let's take a look at a portion of an example test plan for the fine feature that we've been examining. As you can see, we're looking at a branch of the test plan where we expect to find a match. You might have guessed that there will be another section of the plan that covers the negative cases where a match is not expected to be found. It may not be obvious at first, but each leaf in the test plan, a node that has no children, represents a test. The full description of a test is read using the full breadcrumb of the node, from the general to the specific. The snippet of our test plan displayed here contains two tests. They share many of the same requirements. Both tests expect to find a match and will be executed in the up direction with whole words only option checked along with the option for case sensitivity. In both cases, 
the string and the case of the search string will match a target string in the document. The two tests differ only by the description in the leaf node. The first test will use a string that contains spaces, while the second will contain a string with mixed case. Describing test requirements in this way helps the tester identify combinations that matter. Because I copy and paste test plan sections, I often generate a lot of test requirements. Then I review the outline and remove combinations that I consider redundant, those that I don't expect to execute different branches of code. One of the problems with scenario-based test plans is that it's very difficult to get a grasp of what's covered and what's not covered. The concise notation of the outline format solves this problem and makes it possible to get meaningful feedback from other members of the project team. Let's take on something a little more substantial. Our first task is to get an understanding of the feature that we're going to test. The visual query builder pictured on this slide is designed to format a SQL query based on selections made by the user. An example condition is displayed. So far, the query would select records where the run priority is equal to one. The menu bar includes three menu items. Add appends a condition to the query, insert inserts a condition, and delete deletes the selected line. The context menu repeats some of those features and adds the ability to insert an AND or an OR operator and to insert a Boolean expression. In its simplest form, a query states a single condition in the form of attribute equals value. Each condition is made up of three fields. The first field is a dropdown from which the user selects an attribute. The second field is a dropdown from which the user selects an operator. Operators include equal, not equal, greater than, less than, etc. Queries are not always simple. A complex query is developed by assembling a list of conditions with one or more logical operators, including AND and OR. Now that we have an understanding of the feature that needs to be tested, we can begin to write a test plan. I'll start out by specifying the name of the group of tests that I'm about to document. I'll simply write Query Builder Regression Tests. And then I'll start describing the first group of tests. There's no magic to the order that I'm specifying the tests in, but it makes sense to me to start with the GUI elements that I can see. I'll specify each of the tool buttons. I want to be sure that I can add, insert, and delete conditions in the Query Builder. Notice the way that I'm using indentation to group like requirements together. I also want to make sure that the context menus operate properly, so I'll specify a test to insert the operators, a condition, and a Boolean expression. I'll also make sure that delete works. Next, I'll start specifying query lines. I want to make sure that I test both the logical operators, AND and OR, and that I select conditions from various places in the drop-down list. I usually like to include the first, second, middle, second to last, and last items in a list. I also want to make sure that all the relational operators get tested, including equals, not equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equals, less than or equals, like, not like, in, and not in. The Query Builder includes edits that make sure that the type of the value input by the user is a match for the condition. It supports Boolean, integer, real, and string, so I will check each of them. If I were to continue this exercise, I would start to specify more complex queries, combining different operators and conditions. 
but I think that I've taken this far enough so that you get a feel for the approach. Here's an image that displays the plan so far. Another benefit of using outline-based test plans is that they significantly reduce the test management effort. Instead of trying to manage thousands of tests, you only need to manage tens of plans because the outline has already grouped related tests together. In this tutorial, you've learned that writing functional test plans using outline form results in more comprehensive coverage. It also provides a way to effectively communicate that coverage to members of the project team. Finally, the test plan outline serves as a management tool against which managers can assess progress through the test development and execution phases. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you would like to learn more about how Xenix software is reducing the cost of software testing by making testers more productive, visit us at www.xenix.com. Thanks.